I decided to talk to you a little bit about change and change management in one longer video because I feel it's uh, one of the most important points of the exam and it's important to understand the rationale behind why we're doing change. Now change can be defined as any disorganizing pressure arising inside or outside the organization. Now if you remember from the flow chart, inside is what happens inside our company and outside is what happens outside politics, economics, social, competition, all these various areas that affect the company. So it's always disorganizing, and the reason it's paramount, it's very important for the exam and, and, and life, is because everything changes. We're living in a constantly changing and evolving um, society. And because we need to be adaptable, we need to be flexible, we need to be agile, we need to be able to accept the changes that are happening, we need to understand how companies can cope with changes. Now, in a company setting, the triggers of change, which is the next point I want to talk to you about, could be anything. Could be, as I said, from inside or outside the organization. Uh, could be a new leader, a new manager, a new regulation, could be a new software, could be almost anything. And because the changes are happening in a faster pace than what they were, let's say, 10, 15, 20 years ago, it's important for professionals uh, at, 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 at any level to be able to cope with them. Now, many people, or most people, based on research, don't like change. And that's the third area. That's called resistance to change. People resist it. They don't like it. People like the way things are done. And when you tell them to change something, like, you know, work with a new software, they don't like it usually. When you have a new leader, they don't like it usually. I'm not saying that no one likes it, but in most cases, people feel disrupted. People fear change. People uh, need some time. Need, sometimes they need training to deal with change. So that's called resistance to change. What are the solutions to resistance to change? Basically, make people participate. Help them explain the change to them. Make them feel that, they, uh, that, that, that there'll be no problem if this change happens. So weaken the restraining forces. So it's common sense. So to do a little ongoing summary, we know what change is. It's a disorganizing pressure. We know that it could come from anywhere, any trigger of change. And we know that people don't really like it. Now the next point concerning change is the fact that we have to understand how to manage it. And here, the syllabus for SBL has a number of theories that could be useful when you answer any uh, requirement from the case. And the first, and I would say important theory that is quite simple and I think I would use, would be to understand the unfreeze, change, and refreeze theory, which is by Kurt Lewin. What this theory suggests is that change cannot happen like that. It can't happen, you know, in one second, you can't just announce something usually. People don't like that. You need to phase it in. So for example, a company needs to uh, uh, work with a new software like SAP, SAP, which is a very big, powerful software that many multinational firms use. You can't just go one day and say, hey guys, from tomorrow morning we're using SAP. It doesn't happen that way. You need to make sure you kind of melt the way things are done. That's called the unfreezing phase. So during the unfreezing phase, companies would probably send an email, uh, probably have some banners, talk to people, maybe you know uh, have some uh, short uh, awareness sessions on what's going to happen, make some previous announcements, have a timeline, try to explain that we need to change, that SAP is going to help us, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things happening in phase one. Phase one could be anything. The timeline could be like two months, one, three months, six months. It all depends on the company. Then you move and use SAP. That's step two of the theory. So you change and you use it after the six months or however, uh, how much time this took us. And that's when you need to make sure it's fine-tuned. You try to support people on the change. You help them. You gather the feedback. And then the third phase is when you... Uh, freeze 
the situation again and you institutionalize the change. So now you say the company works with SAP. So there's three phases. Any type of change could be done in three phases according to this theory. So maybe if you have a question relating to, you know, what would be the best way to manage the change, you could say that it should be done in phases uh, because that would probably help people understand it better. better. It, 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 would be, it, would, it would help the organization uh, align itself uh, gradually. It would make sure it deals with resistance and phasing it in would probably give it uh, a degree of success. Finally, other types of or other theories that could be used is the contextual features of change in which you check the areas uh, that you need to have a look at before you do any change, the scope of change, how much time you have for the change, uh, the readiness, the preservation, how it, what's going to happen after the change happens, how can you preserve it. So that's one theory that could help you in that area. Uh, puppet is another one which has to do with people, the operations, the IT. You can you can also assess areas concerning you know, from the puppet model uh, and uh, anything else that you can use because it's a practical exam and any theory concerning change would probably give you some good points if you use it in your mind to answer any requirement for the case.